Hello and welcome to Mellow Labs. A lot of you are new here. I did not expect my last video to bring in 445 subscribers. Wow, that's a big number. Hello everyone. I hope you stay and enjoy and support me on Patreon, please. Originally I wasn't planning to do this video, but um, a lot of people like this project and a lot of people want to make this project and a lot of people have a lot of questions about this project. So I'm here to answer those questions and to go over changes that me and a few collaborators have added to the code to make it much better and much more usable. So let's get started. So I'm using WLED on the back end to control the LEDs. WLED is an open source sort of firmware for microcontrollers to control LEDs. It, it runs on a huge amount of microcontrollers for a huge amount of LEDs. Uh, I would recommend going through their uh, supported stuff on their website. Uh, I'll leave the links down below. It is super easy to get started with. I'm using the D1 Mini and I'm using these individually addressable NeoPixels that I think I got from either PyHard or Adafruit. I cannot remember. A few people have asked me whether they need a separate power supply for the LEDs. And if you are doing like huge distances with loads of LEDs, then I would recommend it. But in my case, I'm running them directly off of the five volt output of this microcontroller, which is in turn powered by an old phone charger. And that's been working fine for me. Like this box has 60 LEDs and I'm running it exactly like that. And I've not had any problems. So unless you're connecting all of these boxes together, I think you'd be fine. I'm gonna solder these LEDs directly to this D1 Mini. Let me walk you through it. If you're new to soldering, this is a super simple project. Red is gonna go into our five volt pin. Black is going to go into our ground pin. And the green is going to go to D4, which is directly next to them. So you get to keep them all in a nice line. Normally I wouldn't deploy anything soldered together like this with the pin headers. It just sticks out a bit awkwardly and it's easy to break. This will just be for demonstration purposes. Little solder here, little solder here, and a little solder here. And that's everything we have to do on the hardware side. It is super simple. Now let's install WLED on this microcontroller. First thing you wanna do, head over to your browser and look up WLED. And the first thing you see is the install WLED. They have made this so amazingly simple to install. All you have to do is just plug in your uh, microcontroller. I've got a long USB cable plugged into my computer. Just gonna plug it in. And then all you have to do is click install, select the microcontroller connected to your computer, click connect. And then you wanna click install WLED, install, and it's installing. You can tell because this little guy is flashing. Installation complete, and as you can tell, all of our LEDs are on. So, click next, and it's gonna prompt us to put in our Wi-Fi credentials. And we can click connect. The device is connected to my network, and we can click visit device. And this is our WLED interface, and it is beautiful. We can click my favorite themes, Android and colors. It's beautiful. Now we can go into configure. In the configuration, we wanna to go to LEDs. Here we can configure what kinds of LEDs we have and how many of them we have it. By default, it's set to 30, but I actually have 15 in this chain. So I'm gonna set that. Everything else is pretty much correct. Let's save. That should do some thinking. And now you can see those last two are actually moving now. That's everything we have to do in WLED. Now let's jump over to GitHub. If you've never used GitHub before, it can be a little overwhelming, but all you need to do is go down here and click download zip. Now browsers are a little bit hesitant to download it because there is an exe file in it. So they tend to be a little bit paranoid, rightly so. I'm just gonna click keep uh, more and keep anyway. And now I can jump over to my downloads folder and now we can extract all into my downloads folder. So there are a few things in here if you don't know anything about programming and you'd rather just not touch any of that, the exe file is for you. Uh, if you want to dabble in programming and sort of go over my code and anything like that, uh, just go digging, Have a, a go ham. Uh, but we're going to go with the exe option. All we have to do is double click it. And again, Windows is kind of paranoid about it. We're just going to click run anyway. And this will pop up a little terminal. And in this terminal, we have an IP address. An IP address that we can copy and we can go to 
which will pop up a website. So this is all running out of this terminal here. You can minimize this, it doesn't matter. So now that the website is open in the background, as you can see, the web user interface has changed a lot since the last video. We've pushed something like 50 updates. Me and a couple other people have been working on it. It's been so much fun learning new methods of doing things and also getting feedback from people actually trying to use it has been so much fun. Like squashing bugs that like only appear on Linux for some reason has been super rewarding. So yeah, I'm glad people are actually using it and enjoying it. It did. I'm overwhelmed with the amount of support and attention this has got me. Again, thank you. <laughs> we changed the layout of the list, we added a stock count, and we finally have a drop down menu for the add new item bit, and it is so much fun. And in here we do actually have a couple new fields. For one, we've got the quantity for stock count, and then we have the WLED IP address. Previously, you had to actually go into the code and change it that way, which was cumbersome for new users, but it did allow for multiple WLED microcontrollers. So for example, these two are on separate microcontrollers. So this one's got a separate IP from this one. And the easiest way to make this user friendly was to actually have a field that you just put in the IP of the box you're trying to target. So let's say you want to add a new item. Let's say you want to add this ultrasonic distance sensor. Let's grab the name of it. This is exactly the same as the previous one, so just bear with me. Now let's randomly pick a position. Let's go with eight. Quantity, how many of these do we have? Let's say we have 45. And now we go to WLED and in the address bar, we've got the IP address. Let's copy that, go back to Mimosa and we can paste it in. Now we're gonna have to remove the HTTP because we don't need that, we just need the IP. And then we can click add. And there it is, it shows up at the bottom of our list. There is currently a bug we're still trying to figure out where um, right after adding the item, the locate function doesn't work. Uh, you actually have to refresh the page and then it works. We're not quite sure why, but we're working on it. As you can see, that lights up position number eight. Awesome. And that is all you need to get started with one of these. It is as simple as I could make it. In the future, we are planning to add more features, but nothing drastic. I'm pretty happy with where it is right now. So yeah, I hope you make one of these. If you do, send me photos, tag me. I very much appreciate seeing my workout in the wild. It is still a very weird experience. So I will see you in the next video. Uh, till then, goodbye. Boop, <laughs>